Howdy, y'all. Do you use Ableton Live Lite and wish that you had operator? Me too, because I can't afford Ableton Live the full version, uh, but I've got here a workaround that we can use to kind of get a operator synth. It works, sort of. It's got a lot of limitations, but it's a great way to get you started on your way to making some of your own sounds and uh, some crazy wobbly stuff. It's cool. It's fun. Anyway, here we go. Uh, there is some preparation. You'll need some samples. So create or download uh, some simple wave forms like a sine form, a saw, a saw wave or square wave or whatever, uh, and then save them into a folder that your Ableton has access to. So in my user libraries where I stored all of them, I've got a special spot in my sample folder where I've called it tones, etc. I've got plucks. I've got... Uh, Oh my goodness. I've got, uh, you know, just waveform samples there as well. Sorry about that. That was pretty loud. Uh, but anyway, so get those things made. Then start a new Ableton project. And we're going to start with the beginner version here, which is our just a simpler. Go ahead and drop a simpler into your project. I have here a MIDI clip. It doesn't make any sound yet because I haven't given my simpler anything to play with. So you're gonna find one of your samples, doesn't matter which, uh, and you're gonna go ahead and just drop it into that simpler. Now, it's, it's a little important that when you're exporting these samples, you have them tuned to a C, preferably middle C, so that when it plays back, it plays back accurately. So you see here, I've got my sawtooth uh, wave middle C. Uh, let's go ahead and just use a sine wave here and I'm just going to drop the sample into here. It's automatically set up for classic which is probably going to be what we want. I see that my sample is pretty loud so I'm just going to go ahead and turn it down here uh, and let's see what it sounds like. Okay, so pretty fun. It's kind of Halloween-y because we're getting close to Halloween right now. Uh, but anyway, it's a waveform and you can then uh, manipulate it from here. So a couple of things you can do. You do have uh, access to attack and decay and sustain release. So your ADSR stuff is going to be right here. So let's say I want softer attacks on my stuff. Let's just go ahead. If I turn my, let's go ahead and knock this guy up. Oof, that's too high. If I turn up my attack here, I can soften up the beginning of my notes. If I turn down my decay or, or turn up my release, you can get a, like a vibey sound. So I've got access to my ADSR stuff. Um, I also have access to looping this. Um, I'm gonna turn off snap because I don't need it to snap to a particular um, transient there. Uh, and I'm gonna turn on loop. What that does is it will loop my sound and it won't auto stop it off there. Let's go ahead and get that decay back to normal. So you see it's automatically looping the, the waveform over and over again. Because it's a simple waveform, I don't really have to worry about fading. Um, but if that's something that you are worried about, go ahead and do that fading. Like that. Cool. You can get some interesting wobble effects this way too. Man, that's super interesting.
that's kind of harsh, but I mean, that's super interesting. Okay, so let's just review. Drop in a simpler, drag in a sample of a simple waveform. Does it have to be sine? No, it could be square. It could be saw. It could be some funky thing. Like I've got a soundscape here. Um, or let's go with maybe a Paul stretch and let's just drag this in and see what that is. Cool. So I've selected now just a small portion of my sample and I can play it just like a thing. Okay, so this has a lot of possibilities. Um, let's show you the next level. You know, like that was the beginner level. Let's go ahead and show you kind of the intermediate level. That's one sample, and you, you're kind of limited to using that waveform only. You know, um, the, 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 what's it called? Waveform or operator has access to multiple types of waveforms. So how can we do that with our Ableton Light? Um, I'm going to go back into my tones here. And I have created an instrument rack here in my next channel. Whoops. Bloop -a -doop. There we go. So I have an instrument rack here. And it has four simplers in it. So I have access now to four samples and you can group as many as you want to. It just takes up more memory the more you add. So I'm going to go ahead and add a sign to my first one. A square not alias to my second one. A square alias to my third one. And a saw to my last one. Sweet diggity do. So again, I see my gains are pretty big here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn them down just so I don't blow out everybody's eardrums. You're welcome. Cool, cool. So now if I play this back, you will not be hearing just my sine wave. You will be hearing all of the waves together. So let's go ahead and solo this. Wow, that's still really loud. Let's turn down the volume of the channel. A couple of cool things you can do with this. A couple of cool things you can do with this. You can get into macros and you can macro map things. So what I have on my preset um, instrument rack that is saved for this, I have mapped the volumes to each of these. So map each of them to a different macro knob. And all of a sudden, I have access to quick balancing. I can also key automate which instrument plays in which ranges. So uh, for example, the square not aliased is pretty harsh the higher you get. So I might just turn down the intensity of it, intensity of it as it goes higher. So let's go ahead and solo this guy. So you hear it's cutting out some of those high frequencies for the, for the higher notes. It's cutting out some of the overtones. Um, let's maybe do the opposite for my sign and unsolo that. Uh, maybe just group solo these two. So now the sine wave emphasizes the high notes and the square not alias uh, emphasizes the lower notes. Um, I could also set my saw to be just below middle C here. So that should only be playing the lower notes now. now I need to adjust that a little further down. So you hear that saw wave is only playing the lower stuff. Um, in fact, I could do that with my other square as well. So you can set which instruments will play which thing. It's pretty cool, and it gives you a lot of options and a lot of flexibility. You can also get into automating some of this stuff. So let's say I want, um, let's go ahead and just go back to my thing here. Hide this dude. A couple of ways to select which instrument is playing at which time. Uh, you can automate the on off here, the channel channel on, channel off. Let's go ahead and show, whoops, good grief, Gus. Figure out your life. 
Okay, so let's say I don't want my sign playing for the first half. I can highlight that and turn it off. So you, now you'll see that it's not sending any signal out. It's muted. And here, in just a second, it'll turn back on. Okay, you can also set different instruments to behave differently. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my preset here, and I've called this S4 because it's got sine, square, square, and saw in it. So that's why it's S4, there are four S's. Uh, turn down the gain for us. I can set, uh, all of them have loop on, all of them have polyphonic, but let's say I want my saw, oh, better yet, let's go the square to be monophonic. So I can set that to one there, go into my controls and I could even turn on glide. Change my glide time to super long. Oh, I have it off, my bad. Uh, I'm not sure it's possible to hear that right now. So I've got it turned down pretty pretty low because it's it's the most abrasive out of all the sounds. Um, but you can make them behave differently. So let's go back into my controls here. Let's solo just my saw. Go into my sample. Let's turn on the LFO first. Okay, and let's go into the controls for the LFO. Um, let's go ahead and just turn up the, the volume percentage. And let's slow down the attack so that it takes longer to, to kick in. Let's just set it maybe to 50 mil. And key map it. And let's re-trigger it. So what I should hear now is I should hear vibrato. Let's go to 50%. Yeah, cool. All right, so that's pretty cool. But I think that's a little bit too slow for me. In fact, let's go. So you can hear that happening. Let's turn the filter on. Let's make it something really aggressive here. Okay, so turn that volume back off boost my sound a little bit here because it's a little on the quiet side, hard to hear. Different shapes to choose from. Okay, I could also, instead of choosing Hertz, I could choose to map it to the grid. <laughs> That's so fun. That's nuts. That's so cool. And if I turn the attack down slow enough, let's just set it to uh, one second.
<laughs> it's almost like dubstep bass uh, or beginning to be dubstep bass. I mean, it's it's on the right track. So I've got uh, lots of controls that I can do here. Um, you know, obviously I have access to overdriven stuff. So uh, lots of toys that you can play with here that are available inside of Operator and Waveform, um, but not, I mean, we obviously don't have access to Operator or Waveform in Ableton Live Lite. But this is one kind of workaround to get your own waves and get toying around with them until you can purchase the full version. So all it is is simpler and some simple waveforms and messing around within simpler to do stuff so i'll leave you with this tune and uh have a happy halloween and a great day Okay, bye.